Now the advanced setup opens up this new window. If we go live, we get a camera feed of our uh, area of interest. I can tell it that I want to perform a preview scan with say, just the quad band filters this time because I want to go fast. I'm going to turn on the three and I'm going to draw a larger region and start my preview scan. We can see that if I want to make this tile a little bit bigger now, I can dynamically adjust which X, Y stage positions I want to include in my tile scan. I can then perform another quick scan to check that. And importantly, my tile list is being updated with these settings. So I can stop this preview scan, load up my tile list, and from what I've drawn, I have 25 tiles. Now I may be interested in something over here, and I can perform a live scan. And we can see that there's something else over there. And we can also add in an additional tile region over here. So you can capture multiple tile regions within uh, one experiment. These will be saved as two separate files, one of 25 and one of 12 tiles. So I'm going to delete these two positions. I'm going to come back over here where we had an area of interest and I'm going to draw a tile region to capture. Now to capture this four thing, there are these six tiles, I'm going to now click start experiment. Now I left my two positions open and so it's going to capture those as well. So my experiment has one six position tile and two other single positions. So I can delete, go ahead and delete these two positions and let's capture that again with just the six tiles that we're interested in. And you can see that this takes uh, quite a bit of time to capture. Instead, I can change back from my single channel to the quad band channels. Now, if I perform this experiment, it is a lot faster. I can also then have a look at my individual channels and toggle them on and off as needed. You see that the DAPI is saturating. Perhaps we need to lower our settings for DAPI, recapture that. And auto adjust our settings. You can combine tiles and Z stacks. However, when you're using Z stacks with, uh, when you're using Z stacks with tiling or positions, you have to use the center mode. So we can tell the software here that we're in focus, we're in the center. We wanna take those 11 slices. The reason we take an odd number of slices is that we end up with the slice that we're on with two even stacks either side. So in this case of 11 slices, we have one slice and five either side. So in this capture, we'll have 11 Z positions, three channels, and six positions to build up our tile. And that's going to take a minute to capture.
once the images are captured, we can then go and stitch them in the software. And you can see as it's completed, now we can go to processing, methods, stitching, and we can apply that. Uh, we can select our input as that last one. And our image should then be stitched. Some of the settings that you can use by which channel it's referenced against and which said slice to uh, be the reference Z position. And you can see that the task is trying to do that alignment. We'll take a little bit for a multi-channel six position Z stack. Uh, six, 11 Z stacks and six positions does take up some uh, computational resources. Let me go back to one of our 2D tiles. You can see that alignment happens a lot faster than if it's a Z stack image.